Good morning, class. Mr. Zatoli here with another look at relative dating and determining the sequence of events for a block diagram. That's what that's what this this whole thing is called with all the letters and the layers on it, a block diagram. So this is a little different than our previous block diagram. Let me let me kick out of here so we can get the full view of it. Um, I'm going to zoom in on it so we can really just take a look at what's going on here first, okay? So um, a couple of interesting things to note here. Um, that person is standing on the Earth's surface. So um, that is they are not underwater is important to note. So this surface up here is exposed to the atmosphere which means it's exposed to the um, the agents of erosion and weathering. Uh, and uh, that's why it looks the way it does. Okay, um, a couple other interesting things going on here. In If we look in, in at the bottom, so we have a, a folding event that has taken place here. And there's even D is, is in three spots. So there's a clear folding event that has preceded these horizontal layers so um something's gone on and and, and that's what i want to show you right now is what that something is i'm just going to clear my screen real quick and <clears throat> go back so so here's the interesting piece this line right there that dark jagged line is an indicator for an unconformity. Now, if you remember from our notes, an unconformity is missing piece of buried, uh, buried rock events. So what that means is there was something Ultimately, there was something that was up here that is now missing. Uh, everything that happened after layer, and we're just going to go here, layer D, because it's at the top here, is gone. There could have been many more layers. They are now gone. So we are going to have to handle that. But what I like to remind my students is that when you have an unconformity, the first thing you should think of is the process that got it there. So an unconformity has three things to it. A lift, that's leaving the water. Erosion, that's why that surface is jagged. And then since there is horizontal layers on top of it, subsidence it has gone back underwater so when we get to that unconformity in our sequence of events we are going to have to address those three things and that's what you have to remember is the unconformity automatically means uplift erosion subsidence okay so let's go from there i'm just going to take this stuff out because what's going to we're going to do now is, is zoom out and we're actually going to start to fill in our chart okay um forgive my sloppy erasing i'm learning a new way of doing this right now okay so don't be intimidated by the fact that there's 14 lines of information here okay try not to get upset about that um, it's okay. All right. It is okay. It's not a big deal. So, um, let's see how we handle this. So, uh, the oldest is down here at the bottom. The youngest is down here at the top. You know, the oldest is at the bottom. All right. Oldest to the bottom. So clearly what has happened first is we've got, uh, I'm just going to F then C, then G, then D. All right, that's the order we have. So 
deposition of layer F, deposition of layer C, deposition of layer G, sorry about my G, and deposition of layer D, okay? Um, if we were doing this as a proof and we needed reasons why, superposition tells us that um, that's the order they were laid down in, the oldest to the bottom, F, then C, then G, then D. All right, we know that originally, if we had F, then C, then G, then D, these were laid down horizontally. Well, they're not horizontal anymore. As I noted in the beginning, they are now folded. <clears throat> so after they were laid down horizontally, we would say folding. There's a folding event that came up. Um, and the reason that folding event has come up is um, after those is because they were originally horizontal and it has now changed all four of them. So uh, that is a, a situation where it's cross-cutting relationships. All four layers have been folded, F, C, G, and D. Now, here's the key. There could have been so many more layers above D, but they're all gone. And they could have also been folded, gone now. They are wiped from history. There is no way to find them uh, unless we go to a correlated area where they haven't been eroded. And that's where the next step come in. This is, after that folding event, we had an unconformity, okay? That unconformity happens because um, of the three events. So we had uplift, erosion, and since we're back, we have another layer on top that's uh, flat, we are subsidence. These three are the Sorry, trying to fit that in. Unconformity. Okay, the unconformity are those three events, and that is there. Okay, that blue line up top. So what happened after that? Well, we're back underwater here because of the subsidence. So now we're going to have deposition of layer E. Deposition of layer A. Deposition of layer H and deposition, whoops, sorry, excuse my messiness. I'm trying to write on the computer screen. And deposition of layer B at the top, right? Um, and again, we know they're in this order because of superposition. Okay, superposition. Now, what has happened? Why are there two more events at the top? Well, remember, if we go all the way back to the top of our thing, this guy is standing at the Earth's surface, not underwater. So how we would uh, proceed with that is we would say uplift and finally erosion. That is why this surface is jagged or what we would say weathered and eroded. So uh, a little more complex of a diagram, but the same rules apply. The same scenarios apply. I like to break this up, and the reason I did this in colors, in really into four little pieces, okay? There is the original deposition, the unconformity, the next set of deposition, and finally the situation at top where the person is standing at the Earth's surface, uplift and then erosion. So I hope uh, not too complex. Uh, I got to admit to you all, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and from college, we used to really get involved with ext 
well, let's just say uh, 30 or 40 layers with multiple scenarios. And there are some examples below in your packet uh, of those scenarios. So, <laughs> you know, give it a try. Uh, take a look sometime and, um, you know, try those more difficult versions. Sorry, just going back. Try the more difficult versions. All right, the down below. So um, that's block diagram number four. Uh, we're going to go into block diagram number five. Oops, I almost forgot something. We have to identify the anticline and syncline. Well, remember, anticlines make the A's and synclines sync. All right, so anticline. and syncline. Okay. Hope that helps out. Take a look at the next few and uh, tell me what you think. All right, all. Have a great one. Hope all are well and safe.